Here we have the story of one of the most unusual prize fights in history. The meeting of champion Joe Maxson of Cleveland and Sugar Ray Robinson. The weighing in. This was the second time the fighters had to weigh in because the fight was postponed from its original date. Promoter Jim Norris. Robinson, now maximum on the scale. And chairman of the New York Boxing Commission, Robert Christenberry, and the fighters. The weights were maximum 173 pounds, Robinson 157 and a half, a 15 and one half pound weight advantage for Maxim. Robinson enters the ring. Although he's the middleweight champion of the world, he is here the challenger. Everybody's very frisky at this stage of the bout, especially referee Ruby Goldstein. A little later on, we'll see him when he's not quite so lively. Robinson, too, is full of bounce here, throwing left and right hands and very busy. In this round and the second one, Robinson takes a clear advantage. Ray never looked trimmer, but both fighters seem to be in excellent shape at this stage of the bout. However, it was hot. Robinson misses a right and falls away. Real good, lively round, this one. You can see Sugar Ray is full of fight. Now round two. In those white trunks, the light heavyweight champion from Ohio looks even bigger, and to have a bigger advantage over Robinson than the actual 15 and a half pounds on the scale.
It was in this round that the clinches began to evidence themselves and the referee had quite a little trouble breaking the boys apart. That's a real bear hook. This time they hold on so long and finally, Maxon pulls back. Robinson wild with that right hand. He was head hunting through most of these early rounds. Sugar Ray on his toes, sleek, slick as usual, jabbing to the body, moving in, hooking to the head. Again, that jab to the body. Really tied up now. And there's the bell. So the rounds went one much like the other until the seventh, which was one of the best rounds of the fight and certainly one of the best for Robinson. In fact, it was high tide for the challenger, and you will see him in this round at his very best as he was in this particular fight. By which I mean that at no time in this fight did Robinson look as good as he had at other times in his career. And there's some question among boxing people as to whether he hasn't begun to fade a little bit. Ray digging away at the body, then tied up again. Maxon using his weight to good advantage. Joey not throwing many punches, but not being hurt either. He just won't break. was that Robinson used his speed to great advantage, his greater speed, and looked as if he could just go along and win this fight pretty much at will. However, it wasn't to turn out that way. And the end was a very sad one for Sugar Ray. Now, Goldstein was warning him about holding on too long. Now watch Robinson. He was mad then, fighting in a good flurry.
Some of these punches in here were hard, solid licks. And that's the end of round seven. Round 10 marked the turn of the tide for Robinson and the end of the fight for referee Ruby Goldstein. You see the referee here getting a spirit of ammonia capsule from Dr. Schiff. Note that the bounce has gone out of the referee's legs and a little out of Robinson's too. That heat was beginning to tell. Melting the sugar and cooking the referee. Maxim a little bit more aggressive now. Sugar Ray was still in charge, but backing away, not showing quite as much fight as he had in the earlier round. Goldstein plainly is in bad way. Note that Ruby breaks the fighters only one time in this round, and that was it. Referee holding onto the ropes. Well, there he does touch him again. And so ends round 10. And now you will see referee Goldstein leaving the fight. The first time in 30 years of covering boxing that I've ever seen this happen. The man standing with him is Dr. Schiff of the New York State Athletic Commission. Into the ring comes Ray Miller. Takes over Goldstein's scorecard and will referee the rest of the fight. Now let's watch Ruby Lee. There's still bounce in his legs, but it's not the kind he had before. However, he was all right in a very few minutes. And now it's round 13. The unlucky number, the fatal number in this fight. Nobody knew it then, but this is the last round. Look at Robinson's legs. You'll see how he wobbles, that they've almost turned to jelly. None of that fine skill that he usually has. He's dancing around, but he doesn't know quite where he's going.
Maxon still seems sluggish, but otherwise he's quite fresh. But Sugar Ray is limp as a paper doll now. Outside the ropes, he has trouble getting back. Throws a right hand and misses it a long way. And watch the next right hand he throws. Robbie has the bind staggers now. But he's still trying, still the champion. Still hoping to hang in there through this round and two more. But he's so tired, so tired now. That right hand, and he staggered away from it, unhurt. Now in just a moment, the high point of the fight. That's it. Robinson's right hand misses completely, and he falls flat on his face. Can he hang on? He'll throw one more right, one more desperation right. That was it. Weaving, bobbing, falling away, trying to avoid punishment. And there's the end of the round. Now look at him. They help poor Sugar Ray back to his corner, but he doesn't know where he is, and that's obvious. Now the doctor has him in tow. Dr. Schiff again. The seconds work feverishly over him. Can he come out? Will he come out? Now they try to give him a little air in the intense heat. 104 degrees and it's all over. The bell is rung and Joe Maxson still is the light heavyweight, the 175 pound champion of the world. Nobody announces it, but it's fact and they're still working on Sugar Ray in his corner as he sits there. There I am talking to Maxim in the middle of the ring, and Kern said in this interview in just a minute that he was going back after the big fellas again. Don't forget, Maxim once beat the heavyweight champion Joe Walker. But, of course, what could also beat him? Now, when I take the mic to Robinson, he smiles and nods his head, but he can't talk. Still too tired. And so ended the adventure of Ray Robinson in a class in which he didn't belong. Really still a welterweight, he tried to go out and fight a light heavyweight and did successfully until exhaustion cut him down and perhaps that extra 15 and a half pounds.